we are here with Philip Adrian today. He is a DJ and also the founder of EDMS app. How's it going? Good, good. How are you? Good. So I always like to start with a positive focus, so something that you're grateful for or excited about. I'm excited about this year. There's a lot of things coming up with my website, with my life, uh, my career. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how you got started. Um, into DJing and just <coughs> kind of music in general? Well, I started about like 2009, 2010 when I started going to Vegas, started partying, um, watching all these big DJs perform at the pool parties, at the clubs, you know, and then uh, before that I wasn't really into electronic music. I was, you know, I loved rock and roll, rap, and then when I started going to Vegas that kind of started everything, and then my first EDC, EDC 2011, the first uh, Las Vegas EDC. Yeah, that's what got me into the scene. And I was like, hey, I'm going to Holy Shit, I'm going to Ultra in Miami, and you know, and I love the music, and maybe I should try DJ, you know. And I, I knew a couple DJs back then. Um, and then, yeah, that's what really got me into it. And then I started looking into it more. I bought my own mixer. Um, I asked my friends to teach me how to DJ, and yeah, and here I am a couple of years later, about three years. Um, so what was the first party you went to? What was the first festival you ever went to? Huh, the first one, it's, uh, EDC 2011, Las Vegas. That's my first big event. And what was like, what was your experience like? Oh, it was amazing. Um, that's the first time when I, when above and beyond dropped the uh, sun and moon, you know, that, that's what got me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I saw Afrojack at the kinetic stage. Yeah, I mean, my first EDC was, yeah, it's unforgettable. Would you say that's like your most memorable festival that you've been to up to date, or is there another one? If I can remember most of all of them. <laughs> uh, it's different, because then, um, you know, there's that regular festival like EDC, I would say, you know, Ultra, I've been to Electric Zoo. Um, they're, they're, they're different in their own ways. Um, but then I've been to uh, Holy Ship, Holy Ship 1 and 2. Um, and that's a different experience also. So I couldn't really compare all of them. Um, uh, all of these festivals, they all have their own unique things about them that I like. Yeah. And so how was it when you first started making music and when did you actually start to play shows? Because I know you've been playing a lot, especially yeah. recently. Um, so when I started, uh, I asked um, this guy, my, my good friend, Mikey Tan. Um, um, he's the one that got me started into the scene and I said, hey, I really want to learn how to do this. And then, so I used to drive about an hour and a half to go to Tracy. From from uh, like Modesto, right? yeah, from <laughs> South San Francisco, drive there, go to his garage and learn, and he would teach me how to beat match from uh, the vinyl. Um, yeah, and then I bought my own mixer, and I started practicing and practicing, and then he's the one that gave me my first gig, you know, spinning at a club. Um, very grateful for that, and then I started. I don't know, it's, it's with my personality, I'm very friendly, I like to talk, meet new people, make new friends, and that's what got me into the, to the industry, you know, I met people from the business, the industry, the club, mm -hmm. um, and they helped me out, there's a lot of people that, you know, helped me out and gave me a lot of you know, the opportunities to, to spin for big DJs and for big clubs all over the place, um, and with music wise, I did go to, <laughs> I went to a uh, school called uh, Pyramine, my ex and I went there, tried to study uh, Logic. It's it's a it's a DAW. It's one of those softwares that you use to to produce music. Uh, it's like Ableton. Yeah. Uh, however, sadly, I didn't really learn much because uh, most of the time I'd, I'd be at I, I'd either be at work or in Vegas partying. So I would miss my classes and end up not learning a lot of things about it. Um, I do want to learn. At the moment, I'm very, very busy, and I do have a lot of respect for all the producers out there putting a lot of time and effort and work and dedication to all their crafts, and I respect that. Uh, but someday, hopefully, um, I'll be able to produce music. Yeah. So tell us a little 
little bit about your schedule. I know you do work and you obviously play a lot of shows and you also, even when you're not playing, I see you at events. So tell us about like your day to day. <laughs> so typically when I wake up in the morning, I, I go to the gym. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I work as a registered nurse. I work in the ICU. So I try to save some lives in the daytime and then when I come back from home, um, either I'd be at the club or... <laughs> <laughs> You'll be at the club? I'll be at the <laughs> club or watching Netflix or I'll be spinning, you know. On my days off, I do the same thing, uh, you know. And I do try to support my friends. If I don't have my own gigs or events, I still go out and watch them. Or if I like a specific DJ, I'd go there and watch them too. Yeah. Yeah. And I love to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, we definitely appreciate you coming out to Neon Owl's first event and spinning there. So. Well, thank you for having me. It was an awesome event. Um, the turnout was really good. The energy was awesome. Uh, you were shuffling. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I tried to um, So tell us, you know, of all the shows you've played, has there been one that's like especially memorable for you? Oh, yeah. Um, Hawaii is pretty dope. I love Hawaii. I mean, the energy over there. Oh my god, <laughs> they come up with all these crazy shuffle moves that you don't see here in the bay or in the mainland and, and the atmosphere is just, I mean everyone's so positive, everyone's so happy, like they treat you like they're, you're their, you know, their family or their brother, um, yeah I love it, I love it, I, mean, yeah. I love you know, playing for all the other venues as well but Hawaii, you know, it's, it's something memorable and yeah. I'd love to go back again. Um, what's your favorite venue to play in here in the Bay Area? Ruby Sky. Okay. Yes, I love. It's a legendary club. Uh, that's where I played. I mean, second, well, first I played at Slide, which is the sister club of Ruby Sky. That was where, where my first club gig was, I think. And then Ruby Sky is just, you know, I mean, they have all these amazing talents and DJs, and they've been booking everybody since you know before the other clubs started showing up in the scene. So, yeah. and I owe them a lot. Um, so tell us a little bit about EDM SF. You know, when did you start it, how did it come about, and what's next? EDM SF, it's, uh, I started um, just as a, an Instagram page to begin with, but like three or four years ago. Uh, I didn't really know how to start up with, like I didn't have any basis or structure, but I was looking at the other, other uh, EDM pages also, like, um, what was it, EDM Lifestyle and all those things, they're like, very big now, and I was like, "Hey, there's no EDM uh, uh, San Francisco yeah. group, so might as well start one." So I started that, and at first I started like posting all these uh, uh, events, uh, DJs, uh, local DJs featuring local DJs, and then start growing bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, I was like, "Hey, maybe you know, there's I mean, I can do something else about this." So I started like helping out other DJs. I would post their own events, even if it's not my event, you know, try to get them some more exposure. And then now I, I apply for a trademark. It's now a, a limited liability company. Uh, we had just had a website that came out last December. So it's moving forward, it's expanding. Uh, I would go to festivals like Coachella, I would go to Holy Ship, and they would recognize the sign, and I would run into somebody and say, a uh, lady cost his uh, boyfriend, yeah. uh, Steve, he owns an electric, he co-owns an electric family and he would run into me at Coachella and say, Hey, I know that sign, you're EDM <laughs> like, oh my god, you're Steve Brew from Electric Family. Yeah. So, it's amazing and um, also uh, something that I learned about that is while I was building up the EDM SF is that I, I had to watch out what I put out there because mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of people, are, you know, they, they love you know, the plural culture and sometimes you know with my with my Instagram I like to do a lot of humor yeah. funny stuff because I want to make people laugh you know a lot of the EDM pages they put you know they post like flyers or event pages or DJ photos or festival photos and that's kind of like you know it's pretty all of them are pretty much similar and the same so what makes mine different so I try to post something else like weird funny yeah some people get offended like yeah. why are you doing this <laughs> blah 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 you're, and I'm like if you if you feel offended, please you know unfollow my my page and you know and I'm sorry if I offended you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So what's like the overall vibe that you feel like um, EDM SF gives off? Uh, that you just try to be chill and be happy and you know 
Um, like I try to be, to have my my overall vibe of my page as a as a place where everybody can express themselves and you know just post whatever I want to post. Um, and also just share like photos. I try to share other festival photos, not only like in the local area, like you know the California or San Francisco area. I try to post like events from like Croatia, uh, the, the Sunburn Festival in Goa in India, because then I want to open you know this. I want my page to be like the window for for the other people that loves uh, love electronic music and show them that hey, this is what's going on in this part of the world. It's not just you know. It's not just booming in this area, but everywhere else. So, yeah. you know, the EDM scene is growing. It's a worldwide phenomenon. Yeah. So, um, you know, I know you recently launched a website. So, what's to come this year in 2016 for EDM Oh, uh, plenty. Um, first, we want to have a lot. We wish, and we we're trying to aim to have more bloggers, um, not only in the SF area, but worldwide, because we want guest bloggers from, let's say, you know, in Europe to talk about their festival and what went on and what's so different about their festival and share it to the other part of the world. Um, so, you know, more blogs about the EDM industry and also we want to feature music. Um, there are a lot of artists out there. Uh, one of the reasons why I started it also is that we want it to be like the gateway for the other artists that are so talented there's so many talented artists out there, producers that, you know, they can make s such great music, but they don't have the uh, the window or the, uh, you know, the bridge to, to be out there. Um, and I want to be, I want EDM SF to be that bridge to, for their music to be heard out there without paying any, like a specific website. Hey, I'll, I'll pay you this much money, just, you know, feature my, my music, blah, blah, blah. Because there are other sites that are doing that. And sometimes they don't even have to post, repost your your uh, your track, yeah. and they pay so much money for it, so much work, so much time, but no one's listening for it. So we want to do that, and also for us to to maintain the page and pay my you know my partner, uh, we might have uh, we're gonna do like a little bit of advertising, uh, and also we're gonna have a a page where we can feature probably like. Uh, different, you know, the, the lifestyle, the clothing, um, what else? There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot, yeah. There's a lot. <laughs> so, I mean, talking about artists, um, I really admire that. That's actually something that yep. we try to do as well, just because, I mean, basically right now in 2016, there's so many artists. Like, yes. it doesn't take a yes. lot to start making music, yes. 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 but it's really hard for people to actually break through and get their stuff heard. So have you been getting approached a lot by you know up, up and coming producers? Every day. <laughs> uh, oh my god, uh, I feel terrible. Uh, yeah, everybody hit me up. Uh, email, hey, listen to my SoundCloud. Hey, listen to this. But you know, I don't know. But it's just hey, with my busy lifestyle, it's really hard. That's why I made the we made the website also. So if you want, if you have a track later on and you want it to be heard. Uh, you, you, you know, you can go ahead, we'll try to post it for you. But at the moment, I don't have time to listen to it an hour long mix set. <laughs> and, and I, I mean, don't get me wrong, they're coming with, you know, with all the, I mean, they're, they're very nice and kind all about it, approaching me. And, but then, I, you know, one time there was this guy and he said, hey, can you listen to my mix set? And it was like an hour long. And I said, <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and it was like a podcast. And I was so scared that every time he puts out a mix set, I'm going to have to listen to it. Yeah. I'm like obligated to listen to it every, every time. But I told him, yeah, sure, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll check it out. But I'm only going to do it once because uh, I'm really busy also. And I'm so sorry. But yeah, so, and then I gave him some feedback about it. Um, yeah. And there are a lot of musicians out there, producers. So who are some of your favorite artists right now or who are some of the artists to watch for 2016? I love Marshmallow, aka.com. <laughs> and uh, Jaws is good. Uh, there's, there are a lot of uh, good uh, producers and musicians out there. Uh, but uh, I also love, I love Mark Knight, uh, EDX. I mean, it varies. I love Gregor Salto mm -hmm. and now uh, with WeWag. Um, and Melbourne Bounds, I still love with Will Sparks and them, Uber Jack, Joel Fletcher, uh, plenty.
Yeah. Um, I mean, Jack Yu. Yeah. Um, there's so many. I mean, I don't know what yeah. else to say. They're pretty diverse. <laughs> so, I mean, if you, for those of those people out there that have not caught one of your sets before, what would you say your style is, or is there certain types of music you like to play at your shows? <clears throat> it varies, but I really love the energy. Uh, but also, when I'm opening for big DJs, I my style changes because you gotta play. I mean, opening is 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 an art, you know. You yeah. just don't bang it out. A lot of uh, opener opening DJs they think, oh, I'm gonna open for this DJ, and I want, and they end up like playing like banger sets, and, yeah. and that's not the right thing to do. Uh, usually, we try to play around 119, 118 to 122, 124 BPM. So start with house, tech house. I love tech house. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, a little bit deep house. Um, so that's how I do it, like the tech house and a lot of, a lot of, I play a lot of uh, Mark Knight, Tool Room uh, record, a lot of their tracks uh, for the opening tracks. And then, which is a lot to do, I mean I love opening, it's, 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 it's really an art because then people would start coming in and they're like, you know, just warming up the dance floor so you don't really want to play like the top 128 or top 40 hits, you know, because it's that's not the rule. Yeah. And it's not it's not right because there's only about 10 people and they're banging it out and then <laughs> save stuff for the headline. Yeah, I'll be there, know? I'll be like, yeah. hey. uh, and then and then when you close, it's still in like because if you go and close for the big DJs, you want to make sure that you don't play the same track that they're gonna play. So that you're always gonna be constantly and proactively listening, making sure that you, you're not gonna play the same track, uh, and you gotta make sure that you're still gonna keep the energy level high because you know, you're just gonna leave it and everyone's still trying to dance. Yeah. So um, I do listen. My style changes. Uh, I would say um, when I go to a gym, I put my head, headphones on and I listen to different uh, mix sets from different DJs, and I do keep an uh, notation. I don't have the track list, yeah, so I, I, I couldn't know at what minute, and what hour and seconds did I hear this sound and then, it, and then if it's a banger or if, if it's like a really good track that keeps me like jumping and then I would realize that because then I would like start acting up, you know, exer exercising more in the gym so then I would put like a panda sign next to it because then I would, you know, that's like my note saying that you gotta download this track because this is a dope track, so it varies, so but I love energy music. Uh, uh, I love Jungle Terror right now, <laughs> uh, and Melbourne Bounce, um, and some Future Bass, uh, Electro, and I wouldn't break it down with some progressive, with some vocals to kind of like break it up a little bit, keep them like you know resting. You know, it's like you gotta imagine yourself as the dancer listening to your music. You know, you don't just want to go like start dancing. You gotta give them like a time to rest it up, catch their breath, and then build it up again. So. Yeah, I would say uh, there's no specific style for me right now. Yeah. Okay. And so, what can we um, expect from your Super Fifty, Super City? <laughs> oh man! <laughs> See, the thing with me is that when I have a show, uh, I don't start really like stressing about it or start like building up my track set until that day mm -hmm. or the day before. If it's a super big event. Uh, Maybe like I'll give it like a two days notice when I start like gathering up all my tracks that I've you know that I'm annotated in my phone or saved up, and then start like planning and checking my, my tracks, right? So for Super City 50, it's gonna be a surprise because yeah. like, right <laughs> like, now it's still building. <laughs> yeah, um, I might have a surprise guest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a surprise guest Be showing there, up. But uh, yeah, so that's my style. Like I try to keep my 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 tracks, my mixes fresh. Like like you know, like Saturday, I'm not gonna start like for my show this Saturday, I'm not gonna start planning my set until the morning of that day. So mm -hmm. then once I start planning I put like about five hours or six hours, seven hours sitting down in one spot, downloading tracks, checking out other tracks. Yeah, and the weirdest thing is, I, sometimes when you plan all these things and then you end up like running to different tracks, you totally like end up changing your whole plan and then now you have like a new freaking mix set. Yeah. So, it's, it varies. Yeah. Is there anyone you're excited to see that day at the event? Oh, for Super City 50? Oh my god, everybody. I mean, that's a stacked lineup, you know? You're gonna be there, right? I'll be there. Uh, well, 
you're gonna be backstage. I'll be backstage. You're gonna be interviewing everybody. <laughs> don't, make sure to make sure to check out our stage too. I okay? will. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's a dope event. Uh, the organizers, uh, you know, Trevor Simpson from uh, World Town. Yeah, he had the idea like a couple months ago, and when he brought it up, I was like, wow, that's a pretty dope idea. And then now it's it's happening. Yeah. yeah so okay. it's gonna be fun. And so what's something that you feel like either the music industry or the world can use less or more of? <laughs> they, the world and the industry need to use less, they need to, I mean less hating, more support, you know, support each other because you guys are all in the same field, same business, same industry. Um, I admire how the uh, European DJs, they, they support each other. Like they help each other out, you know. There's this meme that, you know, these guys in the stair, like European DJs, you know, like helping each other yeah. climb, and then American DJs are like pushing each other <laughs> back. Like you know, nobody wants to go up, but they don't understand the concept that you know, if you help one guy, you know, you know, help one guy, you don't know if one of those guys that you're helping, if they make it big one day, or are they gonna help you? So. That's, that's, I mean, I try to think that way, like European DJs, you know, help each other out, support your friends, and yeah. I'm very happy I've supported a lot of people, um, a lot of the DJs that wanted to, to spin and never had the chance, I, I can say that I've given a lot of DJs a lot of chances to, to spin in a big club or a big crowd or just have their music heard, and I'm still doing it right now, it's just that I'm just too busy also with my own life, but yeah, I have... You know, I think about everybody in my crew and in my team. Uh, you know, I, I try to make sure that everybody can have the uh, opportunity to move on, you know, and progress. If they're better than me, uh, shoot, go ahead, you know, yeah. you know, grab the light mic, you know, the spotlight, go, go for it. You know, especially like, uh, shout out to Capic, you know, he's, he's really <laughs> good. He's one of the, you know, I met Capic about two or three years ago. Such a great guy. And then start producing, making remixes and remixes. And then I met Ron Weezer, who's been in the industry for a long time, very good producer too. And last year I said, hey, Capric. And I, I told him, hey, I hooked them up together and said, you guys should connect, you know, you guys got skills. Well, I love that you said that because um, I definitely believe in that 100%. Yeah. And it goes beyond just artists, but yeah. even like organizations as well, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Because I've been asked, like, oh, who's your competition? And I'm like, you know, I don't really see things like yes, that because yes. whether it's like EDMSS, yeah. you know, now or anything else, yeah. like we all have a space to like exist yeah. and we should all help each other out. True, I agree. Um, um, so before we leave and wrap up, yeah. what's the easiest way that people can get in touch with you or EDMSS? Uh, you can just direct message me at EDMSF on Instagram because I'm always there. I know. <laughs> Instagram rules my life. <laughs> uh, I spend more time on Instagram than any other social media, I think. <laughs> uh, it's really bad. Uh, or you can uh, email me at edmsanfrancisco.com. No, edmsanfrancisco at gmail.com. Um, or you can message me on Facebook. But at EDM on Instagram is the best way. Okay. Awesome, well, thanks for coming on. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks.